Scott has completely refreshed their trail riding or mountain sleighing genius model, taking inspiration from the enclosed shock of their XC Focus Spark and giving it a 150mm makeover. Two models of this new Genius will be offered, with a standard Genius and a more aggressive Genius Super Trail that's designed with descending in mind, which I'm going to talk about here. Both get 160mm forks, but the Super Trail gets burlier components. In this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about the latest Genius ST, and I will touch upon the Genius as well. But before I do, why not subscribe to the channel if you haven't already? We're just in Aosta in Italy on the launch of the new Scott Genius. Here's a new bike. Look at that. So we've got a shock down in there. Got 150mm of travel with a custom Fox X nude shock. Full carbon frame on this one, although there are alloy and carbon front alloy back versions. 160mm burly forks at the front. Uh, and this is called the ST version. So it's the super trail version of the bike. We we're in the Alps and we've got about an hour's pedal or an hour and a half's worth pedaling somewhere up there and then what is meant to be one of the best descents in the Alps all the way back down to the village at the bottom. So needless to say I'm pretty stoked about today. Scott's reimagined Genius Super Trail has a piggyback Fox X nude shock hidden in the depths of the frame using Rocklink tech borrowed from the Spark XC bike. This 150mm travel bike utilises their twin lock suspension system on the rear end only. Standard non-super trail geniuses get this tech on the fork and shock. A neat door in the belly of the bike easily pops open revealing the shock inside. Easily accessible Torx 30 bolts means fitting and removing the shock should be a simple affair. Scott hide the shock internally to protect it from the vast majority of water and dirt, which should translate to more consistent performance, lower rates of wear and better shock longevity. A dial on the side of the top pivot bearing rotates and through friction sticks at your sag level to show you how much travel you're compressing when you're sat on the bike. It's quite easy to use but not as obvious as an o-ring on a shock shaft might be as you still have to get off the bike to have a look at it. Continuing the clean looks of the frame, the rear brake and twin lock cables are routed internally through the headset. In a nice design touch, the cable routing is detailed on the inside surface of the door to the access of the shock, something that should help home mechanics refresh their bike during servicing. About 10 minutes into the climb, and I'm testing out traction mode. So if you're familiar with Scott's twin lock system, it's a bar mounted, three position adjuster of the fork and the shock. Now on the standard Genius, it does the fork and the shock, but on this ST one, it just does the shock. And that means you get a full grip two damped fork on the front. That's the lever there. That's the dropper. That's to add damping basically, or air spring volume. And that releases it one at a time. The way it works is the air volume or the air spring has two volume modes and the damper also has two modes. So being a three mode system with open traction and closed, when you move from open to traction, it removes some air volume. And then when you push it through to the climb mode, you get a firm lockout thanks to the damping being adjusted. On the normal Genius, the shock inside there doesn't have a piggyback, it's kind of a more standard nude shock from Fox and pushing it into the traction mode changes the air volume but it also changes the damping so you get more damping as well as less air volume. In the traction mode you effectively get 60% of the travel instead of 100% and it's kind of like adding a massive volume space to the air spring. So it effectively ramps up to the extent that you don't get all the traction and because sag is a percentage of the available air spring, you also end up riding a little bit higher in the travel. So that's how it works. Initial impressions in open mode, the bike rides pretty good. So I'm in open mode now and just pedaling along a bit of fire road. It's all right. Adding it into the traction mode 
actually makes a noticeable difference to how it sort of feels. Feels a bit more pert, feels a bit more lively. You can still run this on flow trails as well. And then going all the way into the climb mode gives a fairly firm lockout on the shock. The geometry of the Genius Super Trail is bang up to date. With a fairly long reach, a slack 64.5 degree head angle, although there are geometry adjusting cups included, and a moderately steep 77.5 degree seat angle. In a size large, you get a 485mm reach, with all sizes getting 440mm chainstays. The headset has an angle adjust function. It's quick and easy to do without having to cut the hydraulic lines that root through the bearings. On the Super Trail version of the bike, it's set as slack, which is where I imagine most riders will keep it. Got to keep hydrated, nice and warm. So we've had our lunch, some lovely pasta. It is Italy after all, a bit of cake. We're going to start descending. So we're going to traverse around the mountain, a few little more punchy climbs along the way. Uh, and then I think it's about a 1700 meter descent all the way down to Aosta. Views for days. Oh, oh God. Someone's, uh, someone's had a few espressos this morning, haven't they? <laughs> Let's see how much traction I've got. Loads. When you stand up and pedal, you can feel it's just a bit tauter. Not using a lot of travel, not wallowing. The problem with having a lot of adjustments on your bike, sometimes if you get to turn them off. So I've just done the whole lot in traction mode. And to be fair, it felt all right. It's in, the, it's in the open mode now. Let's see if it feels any different. Proper alpine riding, I love this stuff. And so far, no complaints. The back end feels it's pretty smooth. So there's clearly quite a bit of support when you bounce on it and push, push through your feet. Oh, I cannot see a thing. There's plenty of support in the mid. You can like really push it into things when you're riding aggressively through corners. And that front end, you can really trust it when it gets a bit nadry when you're tired. Oh my God, there's a tree. I've been getting a little bit of arm pump and I think I've sussed it out. So on the back, there's a 180 mil rotor, which I kind of feel on a bike like this. 150, 160 mil, big fork, big tires. It's a little bit undergunned. If you'll notice, the bike is really quiet. I rattle through some rocks. There's no chain slout. There's no real noise other than the tires. And in my case, the brakes. So the suspension feels pretty well supported. It's pretty smooth as well. There's definitely some feedback, so it's not completely isolating. It's totally capable and in control. We're getting right towards the bottom of the valley now. Another couple of hundred meters to go. Arms are tired. That small rear rotor killing my fingers. What a track. What a track. Nice one, eh? <laughs> nice one, man. So I've just finished the ride, about 1700 meters of descending. A good bit of climbing as well, and uh, it was absolutely wicked. But I thought I'd just give you a quick let's look through some of the spec details on the bike. First off, the chassis seems real solid, nice and stiff. You can push it really nicely into a corner, it doesn't bend and twang all over the place. You can really load the tyres uh, into the dirt and get the shoulder treads engaging. In terms of tyres, Mini and DHF on the front in a 2.6 inch width on some fairly broad rims. Happy with that. That shoulder tread just wants to dig into the dirt and give you loads of traction. Coupled with the geometry, just feels really planted, uh, really confident when you're sort of pushing it a bit harder. The sector on the back splits the pinion a bit, but um, I think it rolls quite fast. XO one access, it's just super dependable. I absolutely love it. Um, works really well uh, and no complaints there. In terms of braking, we've gone to XTR. So the XTR brakes, I think in the UK, you'd get away with it, but on bigger descents, maybe the lakes, maybe South Wales, some Scottish stuff, they just don't have like super progressive amounts of power. And especially on the back with that 180 rotor, got a lot of arm pump today. So maybe I'd consider swapping it out for something a bit more punchy or a bigger rotor. Uh, we've got a Syncross Hickson ICSL integrated bar and stem. Definitely looks cool. 
the issue with these is that you know with a normal bar and stem combo you can rotate the bars around to get it how you want it and with an integrated one you can't really do that also i'm not convinced the width is quite there i think they're 780 personally i like an 800 mil bar and they tend to be a little bit stiffer i like a slightly more compliant bar as well obviously integrated hoses into the headset and then the access stuff gives a super clean front end again though i just don't really want to work on a bike like that Foxy's 36, needs a little introduction. This is the factory one, grip two damper. It's an improved damper now, I think. It's a little bit more compliant, a little bit more comfortable, although I still ran it completely open. As I said earlier on, on the steeper stuff, I did add a few clicks of low speed just to keep that front end propped up. But ultimately, I turned it off when I started getting the arm pump. The shock inside, I've got no complaints. The back end felt pretty good on the small high frequency stuff. It didn't feel uncomfortable. It dealt with it nicely, good braking performance, and there's good mid-stroke progression, so you can really push it into a corner or into a lip. I got a ton of pop out of it. Obviously, one of the big talking points with this is the twin lock. Personally, three levers on here. It's gonna take a bit of getting used to. I did find myself clicking this one instead of that one. Uh, when I wanted to operate the dropper. It's a little bit clunky, it's not the most pretty thing in the world. Functionally though, it does work pretty well. So six of one, half a dozen of the other. I wouldn't say it's the smoothest bike in the world, but certainly not to the detriment of the ride. It's not harsh, it's not clangy. It's just not absolutely like a sofa, you know? Some bikes give that really planted, really disconnected feel. This doesn't have that, you can feel what's happening. Personally, I actually really like that. So I enjoyed riding it. You can feel the rocks and the roots, you can feel the traction under there, you can feel it when you sort of want to pop off something and jump. Um, so I got on really well with that. Some people might want it a little bit smoother overall i've only ridden it once so this is not a full review but from first impressions i've come away pretty impressed the genius has always had a fairly stable pedaling platform with relatively low levels of pedal bob thanks to high-ish anti-squat levels this remains the case on the new bike even with what feels like a more descent orientated intentions of this latest version with suspension open and sat pedaling smoothly, there's virtually no pedal bob to report on, while the rear wheel tracks smoothly over bumps and lumps. This made me wonder what the point of the twin lock was on this bike. When I took it to some steeper single track climbs, it became more obvious. The rear suspension firms up nicely, so stood up efforts don't push the bike deeper into its travel. The bike is sat up a touch higher too, so pedal clearance on technical terrain feels good. The shape of the bike is comfortable on prolonged climbs. The top tube is long enough to give plenty of fore aft movement to regulate traction, while the stem's short 40mm length means the bike doesn't feel stretched. The steep seat angle puts hips nicely over the BB. With the ramp control mode engaged, the bike doesn't sag dramatically, slackening the seat angle. And so even on steep tracks, that steeper seat angle is fairly well maintained. While the Genius Super Trail might not have jumped out as being wildly better than other bikes on the market, what's clear is that Scott has built an incredibly capable, aggressive trail bike. The combination of decent geometry, sorted suspension, and for the most part, good spec details, means I'm very much looking forward to spending more time on the bike to learn more about how it rides on my local tracks. What do you think of the new Scott Genius ST? Let me know in the comments. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and give the video a like if you did in fact like it. If you're looking for even more mountain bike tech, why not check out this video?